Ladies and gentlemen, crafters of all levels, welcome to the ultimate challenge of creativity, skill, and knowledge. Crochet Mastermind, the great yarn quiz. I'm your host, Elise from EliseRoseCrochet.com. Today, we're diving deep into the colorful world of crochet with this thrilling quiz game show. Whether you're a seasoned crocheter with always a hook within reach, or someone who's just starting to explore the world of yarn and stitches, this game is for you. We will unravel the threads of crochet history, techniques, patterns, and peculiarities as you compete for the coveted title of Crochet Mastermind. Throughout this quiz, you will be faced with an array of yarn-tastic challenges, answering questions about stitches, unraveling mysteries around famous crocheters, and even trying to identify yarn weights and abbreviations. With each challenge, we will hook together our knowledge and expertise to create an intricate tapestry of fun and facts. I found a lot of great inspiration on different crochet quizzes that I found when I was just Googling crochet quiz questions. So some of these are from different blogs, especially Celia Crochets. She has a ton of different crochet quizzes and I will link to her blog in the description box below. Other ones I came up with on my own and other ones I just found while digging around the internet and I would find a question or two here and there. Question number one. What part of the crochet hook is the basis of the crochet hook size? A, the head, B, the throat, C, the shaft, or D, the handle? The correct answer is C, the shaft. That is the part of the crochet hook that determines the size. So if you see that it's a three millimeter, that means that the shaft of the crochet hook is three millimeters. Question number two. Which of these is not the name of a way to hold a crochet hook? A, the knife hold, B, the butterfly hold, or C, the pencil hold? If you said B, the butterfly hold, you are correct. The two main ways that crocheters hold their crochet hook is either the pencil hold or the knife hold. I like the idea of a butterfly hold, but <laughs> at this point, I don't think we have that. Question number three, which stitch is often used to create a tight, dense fabric in crochet? Is it A, single crochet, B, double crochet, C, half double crochet, or D, treble crochet? Now this is a bit of a trick question because it depends on if you're using US or UK terms, but because I'm American, I'm using US crochet terms. And the answer would be A, single crochet. That is why single crochet is so great when you want to make crochet toys because it creates such a dense little fabric with very few holes. It's also perfect if you want to make a little basket. Anything where you need a really dense, compact fabric, single crochet is your best friend. Question number four. How many different kinds of crochet hooks are there? A, one, B, two, C, three, or D, Four. If you answered C, you are correct. There are inline hooks, there are tapered crochet hooks, and there are Tunisian crochet hooks. Question number five. What is the most common crochet hook size? A, four millimeter, B, five millimeter, C, six millimeter, and D, 5.5 millimeter. The correct answer is B, five millimeter. Now I just Google that and it seems that that is the consensus that the five millimeter crochet hook is the most popular size. It's not too big and it's not too small. And it's a great crochet hook size for beginners. Question number six. What is a US single crochet called in UK terms? Is it A, double crochet, B, small stitch, C, half double crochet, or D, half stitch. If you answered A, double crochet, you're right. US and UK terms are slightly different and that's why it can be so confusing if you get a pattern and you aren't sure which one it is. Because the names are so similar, our single crochet is the UK double crochet and that can be so confusing. So always make sure to check that pattern first to make sure, are we talking about US crochet terms or UK crochet terms? Question number seven. What does the abbreviation Y-O stand for in crochet pattern? Is it A, your option, B, yarn over, C, yarn out, or D, yarn onward? If you answered B, yarn over, 
you are correct. We use yarn over all the time in crochet, and that's just when you put the yarn over the hook when you're making double crochet, treble crochet, and many other stitches. Question number eight. What is the purpose of a crochet gauge swatch? A, to test the quality of yarn. B, to practice different stitches. C, to measure the size of a finished project, or D, to test tension and ensure the correct size of the project. If you said D, that is the correct answer. A crochet gauge swatch helps you to know if you have the same tension that the pattern calls for. And that way, if you're making a sweater, you need to test your gauge to make sure that with your tension and the crochet hook size and the yarn that you're using, you will create the size of garment that you want to make. Question number nine, how many turning chains are there for a half double crochet? That's the US term. And for UK terms, it's a half treble. A, none, B, one, C, two, or D, three. If you said C, two, you would be correct. The turning chain is at the end of a row when you need to turn your work and you need to get the height of the stitch. And traditionally, that is two chains. Question number 10. DK weight yarn is also known as which weight yarn? A, a number one, B, number two, C, number three, or D, number four. If you said C, number three, you are correct. When you look at a yarn label, it will typically tell you what the weight is. It can either be in words like DK, worsted, fingering, sport, or it can be in numbers like number one, five, four, two. All of those mean the weight of the yarn. Question number 11. What does the Japanese word amigurumi mean in English? Is it A, small animal, B, crochet or knitted stuffed toy, C, crochet or D knitting. If you said B crocheted or knitted stuffed toy, you would be correct. Amigurumi did originate in Japan. It gained its popularity there. And if you would like to know the history of Amigurumi, I actually have a full video about it where I go into all the detail. Thank you, Japan. Thank you for bringing us Amigurumi. It's so wonderful. Question number 12. Which type of crochet creates a fabric that is similar to knitting? A, Tunisian crochet, B, Irish crochet, C, filet crochet, or D, broomstick lace crochet? The answer is Tunisian crochet. I have never done Tunisian crochet before, but I know a lot of people really, really love it. And why it looks more like a knitted fabric is that all of the stitches remain on the crochet hook, similar to knitting. With traditional crochet, we finish each stitch as we go, but with Tunisian crochet, those stitches stay on that hook, just like in knitting. Question number 13, what word best describes this yarn? Is it A, a hank, B, a skein, C, a ball, or D, a donut? If you answered A, hank, you would be correct. A hank is the way that the yarn is wound. So it's a big circle shape, and then it's twisted together into what is called a hank. Question number 14. In crochet, what does the term frogging mean? Is it A, creating lacy patterns, B, working on a project quickly, C, ripping out stitches to fix an error, or D, crocheting underwater designs? I really wish that the answer was D, but it's not. It is C, ripping out to fix a mistake. And the reason why it's called frogging is because a frog makes the sound ribbit, ribbit, and so it sounds a little bit like rip it, rip it. So that's why we call it frogging. Question number 15. What type of yarn is known for its softness and warmth often used in crocheted garments? Is it A, acrylic, B, cotton, C, wool, or D, nylon? The answer is C, wool. There are so many interesting things about wool, and that is why they are used a lot in garments that need a lot of warmth. Wool naturally traps in heat. It's also a natural water repellent. I'm currently reading The Knitter's Book of Yarn by Clara Parks. I highly recommend this book if you want to nerd out on all of those little details and know everything about synthetic fibers to natural fibers to plant fibers to animal fibers. It is fascinating. I'll leave a link to it in the description box below. Question number 16. What do the three letters WIP WIP mean in crochet? A work in perpetuity, B, work in progress, C, woven in purpose, 
or D, work in progression. It sometimes feels like it is A, work in perpetuity, especially if you're working on a really big project, but it means B, work in progress. If you're like me, you have too many whips right now. I've got too many and I don't like having this many, but I know for some of you, it keeps things interesting and you love having multiple whips. And then there are those of you who are like me and we love to have just one whip at a time or two maybe at the max, but that is not my current state, but I'm working on it. Question number 17, what does the term blocking refer to in crochet? Is it A, creating color blocks in a pattern? B, adding a decorative border to a project? C, adjusting the tension of the stitches or D, shaping and setting the finished project. If you said D, shaping and setting a finished project, that would be correct. There are lots of different ways that you can do it from wet blocking to steam blocking to even dry blocking where you just shape, say like a granny square, but there are a lot of different ways to do it and you can find lots of different tutorials on YouTube for how to block and what the best way is based on the yarn that you're using. Question number 18, what famous celebrity is a game show host and now has her own line of yarn. Is it A, Vanna White, B, Betty White, C, Meredith Vieira, or D, Jenny McCarthy? The answer is A, Vanna White. Now, I grew up watching Vanna White on Wheel of Fortune. It was one of my grandma's favorite shows, and I'm blown away that she and Pat Sajak are still doing this. If you live in the U.S., you've likely seen Vanna's Choice on craft store shelves, and that is for Vanna White, who turns the letters on the show Wheel of Fortune. Question number 19. What Amigurumi book was published in November of 2017 and sparked an entire new generation of crocheted toy makers? Is it A, Lula and her Amigurumi friends, B, My Pretty Brown Doll, C, Crochet Iconic Women, or D, Animal Friends of Peekapow? If you answered D, Animal Friends of Peekapow, that is the answer. I could go on and on about Animal Friends of Peekapow and Jan Schenkel, the designer, and I've made multiple videos about her designs and her books, but I truly believe that Animal Friends of Peekapow, the original one, has sparked an entire new generation of crocheted toy makers because her designs are so gorgeous and they're beginner accessible as well. That is the beauty of them. They have so much personality. They have so much character. I love every single thing that she designs. So if you've never checked out Animal Friends of Peekapow, make sure to do so because the patterns are just mwah chef's kiss. Question number 20. Gauge is often also called A, tension, B, tightness, C, weight, or D, hook size. The answer is A, tension. Your tension creates your gauge. Tension is individual. It will depend on how tight or loose you crochet. It will also depend on what size crochet hook you're using as well as the weight of yarn. Question number 21. What popular crochet item made its publication debut in 1897 in Weldon's Practical Needlework. Was it A, crochet mittens, B, granny squares, C, crochet toys, or D, crochet doilies? If you answered B, granny squares, you would be correct. Granny squares had been around before 1897, but this was the first time that they had ever been in print. Question number 22. What yarn weight is also called worsted weight? Is it A, DK, B, bulky, C, Aaron, or D, fingering? Worsted can also be called Aaron weight, and those terms can be used interchangeably. If you want to get super technical, Aaron weight is slightly heavier weight than worsted, but the terms are used interchangeably. Question number 23. Name the popular crochet website featuring patterns, designers, groups, and more. Is it A, Ravelry, B, Revelry, C, frog it, or D, crochet now? If you answered A, Ravelry, you would be correct. It is an amazing platform for crocheters who want to find patterns, you can find information about yarns, you can find groups, you can connect with people from around the world. You can also organize all of your pattern details, you can share your finished projects that you've made. It is an amazing place. Question number 24. What do many crochet projects begin with? A, a fisher knot, B, a slip ring, C, a magic ring, or D, a slip knot? 
Technically, the correct answer is D, a slip knot, but if you're doing a lot of projects in the round, like amigurumi or sometimes even granny squares, you might be using a magic ring, but I would say on the whole, most standard crochet projects start with a slip knot. So you can decide if you count your answer right or wrong on that one. That really depends on which type of project you're doing. Question number 25. What are the two different ways to make a single crochet? A, yarn over and yarn plus. B, over under and under over. C, yarn over and yarn under or D, under the knot and over the knot? The answer is C, yarn over and yarn under. I actually did a whole video about this and it's typical to make amigurumi with yarn under, but the standard way to do a single crochet is to do yarn over. And it really depends on if you put the yarn over the hook or under the hook. And yarn under will create a smaller, denser stitch than yarn over because it uses less yarn. What does the term INV DEC stand for? Is it A, invisible decrease, B, inverse decrease, C, invisible double crochet, or D, inverse double crochet? The answer is A, invisible decrease. This is something that many of us do when we are decreasing. And when you do an invisible decrease, you're going into the front loops only of the two stitches that you will be decreasing. And it creates a very nice invisible decrease. Question number 27. What popular yarn brand started selling in 1936 in the United States? Is it A, Lion Brand? Is it B, Red Heart? Is it C, Coates and Clark, or D, Cascade Yarns? If you answered B, Red Heart, you are correct. I thought this was so interesting because Red Heart is a yarn that I grew up with. My grandmother pretty much only used Red Heart yarns, and I would imagine that many of your grandmothers did as well. And it is a favorite among many crocheters, especially in the United States, because it's a yarn that is very accessible to most of us, and it's got a very budget-friendly price point. Question number 28. Which type of yarn is acrylic? Is it A, an animal fiber, B, a plant fiber, C, a synthetic fiber, or D, a blend? If you answered C, synthetic fiber, you would be correct. Acrylic is a synthetic fiber because it does not grow on an animal like wool, and it's not a plant-based fiber like cotton or bamboo. Acrylic is great for many projects because it's affordable. It also can be very soft, and you can throw it in the washing machine and the dryer. Question number 29. According to the Craft Yarn Council, what is the lightest weight yarn? Is it A, super fine, B, lace, C, light, or D, fine? If you answered B, lace weight, you would be correct. According to the Craft Yarn Council, lace weight is a zero weight. There are numbers one, two, three, four, five weight yarns, but lace weight is a zero. This is a question that I had to look up the answer because I had no clue because I don't work with these weight yarns, but I know some people that do and you have my total respect. Question number 30. What is the best hobby in the world? Is it A, exercising, B, cooking, C, cleaning, or D, crocheting? I'm going to assume every single one of you got this question right because the answer is obviously D, crocheting. Okay, so now it's time to tally up all the points. If you scored anywhere from zero to nine questions correct, you are a novice. And that's great. That just means that you have so many new and exciting things to learn. If you got 10 to 19 questions right, you are an intermediate. You've got a good basic understanding of crochet knowledge, but you're on your way to being an expert in no time. If you got 20 to 29 questions correct, you are advanced. You know your crochet and you're not afraid to share all of your knowledge with others. If you got all 30 crochet questions right, you can now call yourself a crochet mastermind. You know your stuff and you can teach us a thing or two. Let me know in the comment section what your score was and if you'd ever be interested in doing another crochet quiz again because I love doing things like this. I love being a little bit nerdy and doing a little quiz all about crochet knowledge. I find this stuff really fun, but I obviously 
honestly don't want to make more videos like this if you guys think this is mm, no, no, no. So let me know in the comment section if you would love to do this again. I hope you all enjoyed this little quiz game show. I had so much fun doing this and <laughs> doing all the research for it. I hope you have a great rest of your week. Stay safe out there and happy stitching.